action. All right, let's take a look at the resumes we got today from the career fair. First one, major skills, interest, mm, generic. Major skills, interest, generic. Wait a minute. They look so similar. Are they twins? No, they're not twins. And of course, you don't want your UX resume to sound generic. Even though sometimes you add more words to it, it still kind of feels empty. When I was writing my resume in 2013, I was wondering about the same thing. But you know what? There's actually something that you can do to make your resume a lot better today. Oh, this has nothing to do with the video. I'm just cleaning up my files. In this video, I'm sharing seven best tips from my learnings in the past, from quick wins to longer term wins, that you can boost your resume power overnight and over time. Are you ready to change from your resume? Let's go. Good morning everyone, my name is Justine and I'm a designer working in Silicon Valley. In my previous video, I talked about 13 things you can include in your resume and why they will give you relevant experiences. In this video, let's take a look at what you can do to add relevance and value to your resume today. After you smash the like button and watch to the end for the bonus content. Without further ado, let's dive right in. Let me pull up those 13 things again. These are what make your resume more relevant to recruiters to job applications. If you are a freshman or still early in your career, how do you start? You probably don't have many high priority ones, so you need to work towards them. It's going to take a while to get there because you only get one internship every summer. You just started the semester, what can you do? You can work on other P items to instantly boost up the relevance in your resume so recruiters can at least say, you don't have relevant experiences, but what you have looks good. A good impression is nice to have. Here are the six best tips and I'm gonna start from the quick wins and move towards the longer term wins. Tip number one, hack your skills. Pay attention to the job post. This Tesla one, for example, it says ability to prototype in Keynote, Flinto, principle or sketch. Then, if you have nothing else to put, you can literally write prototype in keynote, flinto, principle, and sketch. Easy, right? This will instantly make your resume relevant to the job post because your resume literally says what the job is looking for. Sketch might sound like too basic to include. To be honest, it is. But since you are applying to this job post and it's related to UX, so you could include it. Again, it's still better than listing PowerPoint as your skill. Don't do that. If you're really good at some niche ones, you can include them as well. Like object checking with green screen visual effects in After Effects or interactive prototypes with Unity 3D and Microsoft Kinect. Those will sound way more interesting, specific, and relevant. Once you browse a lot of job posts, you will start to see what tools they might require and you will see some overlaps. It's good because you can just have the same set of skills and don't need to make a different resume for a different job. But there's one job post from your dream company, let's say, requires some really specific, unusual, uncommon skills like Cinema 4D with 8R kit, other VR experiences. Then make sure you include those into your resume. Tip number two, keep a high GPA. Settle down and tune to a new mindset. Keep getting A's in your classes. Show a gorgeous whole number 4.0 GPA on your resume and tell the world that you are a promising and reliable candidate for the internship. GPA was in fact part of my application for my first internship and my 3.9 certainly helped to some degree. There's no actual physical tangible work to do. It's more like a mental prep to shift your mind to a new perspective. Tip number three, search for hackathons. If you don't know what hackathons are, they are basically a super intense, one to two day, no sleep coding competition. And you can join a team to design a UI and a UX. Just by participating, you are able to acquire or learn some new design skills that you are not able to get in class. And of course, it will also help your resume. If your team won, 
it will be even more helpful. To get started, first, you just need to find hackathons. If you are in a big research institute like my undergrad Georgia Tech, you can look at the flyers from campers or ask your CS major friends, even the CS professors. If you go to a design school like my grad school art center, you can look off campers. Tonight, before you go to bed, a simple Google search can help you find some. Mark the dates, assemble a team, take some trophies, and show those off on your resume. Tip number four, email a research group. Research projects are ranked third on the priority list, so take advantage of that. And it's actually very easy to do, especially if you're in a research institute like Georgia Tech or UC Berkeley. You cannot get an internship tomorrow, but you can join a research group tomorrow and start to work as a research assistant to get some real world experience. You can literally start doing it right now. Find a research lab with topics that you're interested in on your school website and email the professor who leads the lab saying that you were interested in their work and you want to get involved. No, please don't copy what I wrote. It was just an example. Early in your career, any sort of design work is a good practice and a great learning opportunity for you. And a research project is a fantastic one. You can get paid or college credit by doing research. That's really fantastic. I started my research journey pretty late, my final year of undergrad. I made that mistake so you don't have to. Thank you later. Even though I started late, believe it or not, I do have one publication on quantum mechanics as a designer. Yeah, it's real. Tip number five, start a side project. This will take a little while, but you can start thinking today, especially if you don't like some of your school projects, which could happen. Well, I hate some of mine, so no judgment there. Just live and observe the world. Oh, I love this product. Great, think of a way to improve it, make it even better. This product sucks. <laughs> Well, then think of a way to redesign it. What kind of product do you like and enjoy working on? Redesign a website, an app, a service. Kick off that exciting side project. You must have some opinions on what you like and what you don't like. You just have to look into your head and find those. Another way to think is, is there a company that you want to work for? Do you have a dream company? If you want to work at Apple and you are an industrial design major student, you can easily design a hardware product that could fit into the Apple product ecosystem. When you include it in your resume, the recruiter will be like, oh, relevant. Or if you want to work at Airbnb, then you can do a UX project for a more seamless guest check-in experience. Because those projects are relevant to their existing product line, so they will be considered as relevant experiences. Tip number six, acquire new skills. This can take longer time to develop, but it's worth it in my opinion. I'm not asking you to develop a random skill. I'm talking about investigating things that you like and see how you can make it yourself. It's more like a natural human instinct. You go to your friend's house and you are like, mm, the ramen is so good. How did you make it? Dude, it's instant ramen. Oh, but, but do you use different hot water? You add something to it? I want to learn to make it at home. It works the exact same way in design. Let me give you my example. I have absolutely no formal training at all in motion design, animations, or video editing. But one day in 2014, I saw some really cool UI animations on a blog post and I decided to learn After Effects to make things like that. Just because it's so fun and so cool to look at. Nowadays, I use After Effects on a day-to-day -day basis at work. And you can also find some traces of my animations and motion design on my portfolio. It's kind of everywhere. All it took was me following one YouTube tutorial each week. Yeah, you can pretty much learn anything on YouTube nowadays. So if you already learned something new so far, please destroy the like button down below to let me and YouTube know so that other people can also get a chance to see this video and learn something new. So pay some attention to the physical world around you or the digital world where you spend most of your time. Is there anything you like? Anything you want to make? or anything that you would like to learn to make. Let's just say After Effects, for instance. First, you put it on your resume, and then you will find After Effects is pretty useful for your school side or research projects. 
which will give you better projects to put on your portfolio and you can also use your animation skills to design your portfolio to make a better portfolio website. All those three things together make your internship application super strong which could potentially lead to an offer. Once you get your internship, you will use your After Effects skills to bring value to the company. So over time, you keep sharpening your skills, which leads to offers, and that helps your resume. That helps you get more offers. See that flywheel and feedback loop. One reinforces another. Tip number seven, design your resume. All right, last tip is the biggest and the most important tip. If you already forgot about the previous six tips, it's okay, remember this one. Actually, I changed my mind. Don't forget the other six, they are still useful. Think about it. You are a designer, you can craft, and your resume is the first, very first touch point of your design skills. And you have only got one chance, exactly one chance, to make your first impression. Think about seeing a really visually appealing resume versus a messy, random, and ugly one. You get the idea, right? No matter what stage you are at, freshman or graduating senior, you are a designer, you should design your own resume. How it looks and how it reads. I can tell you right away, hiring managers will care about how your resume visually looks apart from the content. True story, I asked my manager about it. She told me when she first saw my resume, she could tell that I spent some time and effort on it. Oh yeah. You have no idea. Which is a big thumbs up from the get go. Your resume itself is a four year long graphic design project until you graduate from undergrad. So start working on it today. Even if you are a freshman and you have no content to put, that doesn't stop you from having a resume with good topography, nice spacing, strong hierarchy, and clear legibility. There's absolutely no conflict between the amount of content you have and a crisp, easy to read resume. If you remember, recruiters only spend six seconds on your resume. So start designing it early to make sure that recruiters can get the most important information within six seconds. Setting up a structure for your resume can help you iterate more and faster. Because once you have new content or more content to fill in, you can just update it in less than five minutes. All you are doing here is essentially designing a system for your resume, which is, I would say, a pretty fundamental but also important thing to get good at as a designer. And of course, your resume would be a great practice for designing a system, maybe even your first system design project. Think about where your name, your email, your portfolio link will go. How do you treat the font size, the weight across each block of the content? How much spacing do you need within one section and between two sections? To have some fun and help test your resume design system, you can imagine you have three internships to fill up your experience section. Pick your favorite companies, maybe Apple, Tesla, Airbnb, and write a few lines about them to see how it looks and how the structure holds up. Maybe that's even your dream resume to aim at. For the real resume that you will send along with your applications, just remove those imaginary items. You should still have an intentional and nicely crafted resume. You need to make a resume anyways, so why not take advantage of your design skills and turn it into a fun and impactful design project? Again, since you're a designer, you should know, understand the users. You don't want them to and you don't expect them to spend a lot of time reading your resume. I know, I know, six seconds. Exactly. They won't spend that long anyways. So a few more tips for designing your resume system. Keep it on one page. Keep it lightweight, meaning less adjectives, less generic words, and less text in general. Just get to the point. Keep enough spacing for legibility, meaning lots of breathing room. Use too much space. For each iteration, you can totally print it out and give it to your friends to read for six seconds as a way to test your design and see what they remember, and then iterate on the top of that. See, use design thinking to design your resume. So, do you still think you are a freshman or sophomore that there's nothing you can do to improve your resume? I just gave you seven tips, so there are at least seven actionable things that you can work on. Even if you are a graduating senior, you can still use those tips as a checklist to see if you hit all the points. If you're still watching, you must be an amazing student. Since you're willing to learn, I'm gonna offer something else for you. Shh, don't tell anyone. I can help look over your resume and give you some feedback. 
all you have to do is one smash the like button to help support me spending hours creating this video and two let me know in the comment section down below that you have liked the video and then next you can send your resume to my email which you can find on my about page make sure that you include your youtube username so that i know you have left a comment and i will give you a shout out in my next video speaking of shout out huge thanks to emily lynn bianca ioana costin let me know in the comment if i'm saying your name correctly i'm pretty bad at names so i could be completely off and rija amir Again, let me know in the comment section if I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Uh, but since there are two A's, so it's Amir. Just like my name, Justine, right? Rija Amir. And lastly, thank you, Made by Mira. Hope you all learned something new and enjoyed the bonus content and good luck for all of your future internships. With that said, thank you guys for watching. If you find this video useful or insightful, please destroy the like button for the YouTube algorithm. If you want to see more videos like this, also consider smash the subscribe button as well. Doing so will tremendously help the channel and motivate me to produce more high quality content down the road. Have fun following your passion and keep designing a better future. See you on the next video. Cheers!